Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So, <laughs> so we have some of our team here uh, this morning, and we wanted to talk about um, some key questions that people should ask when choosing a healthcare professional. And I, uh, I have two of our rock star admins here, uh, our office manager Michelle and her coordinator Lindsay, and they often either get by email or by telephone. Um, questions why people should come to us, what makes us different than other people. And there's a story this week, Michelle had an interaction with somebody over email, so I wanted Michelle yes. to sort of explain that um, a bit and then we can go into why we decided to do this topic for today. Absolutely. Um, so the, yes, earlier this week I had a, a client who just wanted a bit of explanation with regards to the cost of our sessions and after consulting and chatting with some of their friends, um, she was told that other clinics would charge a bit less for a longer session. And she just wanted a bit of an explanation. So I went on and I explained the quality of the service that we provide here at Belfleur Physiotherapy. For example, all of our treatments are provided in private treatment rooms. And throughout the entire session and the entire treatment plan even, you are followed by one-on-one -on -one with your physiotherapist. Here at Belfleur Physio, we don't have any assistants that will come over and take over in the middle of the session. So for example, I'm a client, Eric is my physiotherapist. Every single appointment, I know I will be seen by Eric. And this way he sees my progress a bit better and we've developed this rapport between each other. Between mm -hmm. each other, and it uh, it definitely helps to make me feel more cared for in the sense that he sees my progress, and it's not like every time, okay, well, what happened last time, and this and that. So mm -hmm. it just builds a bit more of a personalized approach, mm -hmm. and just the different types of techniques that we use as well. We focus more on manual therapy uh, with our there, <laughs> um, hands and such, which we feel has, has more of a um, permanent pain relief as opposed to certain modalities that may, f which we've talked about in previous huddles, may have more of a temporary pain relief, but yeah. then the pain always seems to be coming back. So it's just different approaches that, that we try and, and educate our clients about the way that we... So having mm -hmm. had that communication with the client, what, yes. what, 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 what was the outcome? Like, so what, just what ended up happening? explaining yeah. really you know, the quality of the service that we provide and she was very appreciative of it and mm -hmm. she, I mean, it just, everything is just more black and white for her and she decided to actually to stick around because she knows that she's being followed um, and she's she's already feeling better, and so she just she decided to, to stay with us. So. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Not to put Lindsay on the spot, but <laughs> yeah. what are some of the comments? So Lindsay is the person that, who probably answers the most phone calls. Yeah. So um, what are some of the common questions that you get as a result, too, in terms of people wanting information? Like, what seems to be sort of the recurring sort of themes? Uh, they want to know cost is, is the big one. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, they want to know, am I going to be with my physio okay. the entire time? time yeah. are you gonna hook me up to a machine and, okay. and walk away yeah. are you gonna see me and about 10 other people in the span of a half an hour okay. uh, are, are, you, are you gonna see me and 10 other people in an open gym area exactly That's yeah the open one. gym area is huge and yeah. as Michelle put it perfectly it's like a um, an emergency it's like an emergency room kind it of deal you know yeah, you got yeah. Like the, they uh, clients, saw these beds with like curtain, like curtain, like you can like, open that. the curtain and you see the other person. I don't know. It's, yeah, and well, we get people calling because they've had uh, different experiences, not yeah. yeah, not great experiences. I want to know: are, are we going to do the same thing? Mm -hmm. So, so the thing, um, I think the big thing is like, especially for us as a team, is in the absence of value. People, mm -hmm. the default decision making is always on price. Price, yes. yeah. people. Yeah. They'll call for a price. They don't know what you get for that price. They just know price. So they know fifty dollars versus ten dollars. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I'll just go with the ten dollar one. So that's in the it. in the absence of value, that's what they go towards, right? And so I think that's the big thing is you have to draw out those value questions when mm -hmm. you're when you're calling around. And this is not just physiotherapy. This is for any healthcare service. Absolutely. Dentist, occupational therapy. You you, you want to make sure that you ask um, certain questions. And so yeah. we're going to talk about some of those questions now. There's four that I have sort of in my mind. Um, and we've sort of talked about some of these already. But uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the big questions is, will I only see a physiotherapist? Mm -hmm. And why do you think that's important? 
Well, it would be important for me because I'm I'm spending time and money and I want to get better. I don't want to see, like, your assistant. I want to see you. I'm yeah. paying to see you, the professional. I was just going to say that. Like, if, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, no, like, you get what you pay for. How well, that's say, it. You like, know? you come so, recommended. I want to see, exactly. see you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm going to pick on Eric here because Eric worked somewhere <laughs> else for a few months before coming to work with us. And you worked in an environment where... Um, you the, you saw multiple people in, in at the same time, right? So probably up to like four people an hour. Yeah. Um, exactly. So if you do the math, sixty minutes divided by four people is fifteen minutes that they got hands on with a physiotherapist. Wow. Um, so our approach here is a little bit different, and I, I'm I don't know if you want to elaborate on on that in comparison to what you previously definitely. worked at. Yeah, definitely. So through school and uh, after school too, you get about a lot of opportunities to work in different clinics and different environments and. Some environments are more like Jason was saying, where you see people pretty frequently, like someone every 15 minutes, then that person only gets 15 minutes. Even though they're hours a session because they're seeing an assistant or they're put on machines, um, their one-on-one care with the physio is just the 15 minutes. And that's a little rushed in my opinion, uh, depending on people's approach. Uh, you don't get a good full picture of, of what's happening, how the person's progressing, what's the real issue and how to address it. So uh, that's why here we offer we do a lot of 30 minutes. We also offer more than 30 minutes, but 30 minutes is a good amount of time to, to check what's going on, um, look at how things are moving, and then come up with a game plan to help achieve things better. So mm-hmm. in my personal experience, the 15 minutes, um, usually people can come in for, for weeks and weeks and months, and it can take longer, but I, from what I'm noticing is the 30 minutes, we're getting a lot more aggressive. We get more in, and then um, usually it can take a, a shorter and I, time. I think part of that, too, is yeah. the, the, the treatment ends up being more tailored to the needs of the person mm-hmm. rather than just, like, you know, you have the person for 15 minutes, but then you're thinking about Joe and Jane in the corner that yeah. you still have at the clinic under your care, right? Yeah, right. And, and I think lives. you wanted to maybe elaborate on that, too, because with the more treatment time, you're allowed to do... A quality treatment, yeah. which mm-hmm. is, like the biggest thing and when I got the job here I was so excited like super excited because it allowed me to spend more time with my patients and give quality care and that's as physios that's what we want to do you know so so that's that's a super important question is will I only see a physiotherapist right and so the session may be 30 minutes but it's 30 minutes with a physio if you go to somewhere somewhere else sometimes and they're like oh yeah we have hour-long sessions the question should be, though, will I see my physiotherapist for that full hour or yes. how long will I see my physiotherapist for? And that's, I think, a common Absolutely. question that the, the yeah. admins end up getting. So super important. Will I only see a physiotherapist and for how long? Um, another important question is my first visit. How long is my first visit for the assessment? Is it an hour? Is it 30 minutes? Um, I think hands down, and this is just me, but I think the, I think the assessment should be an hour. Because you have to get down to the root cause of the problem, um, educate um, the client, the patient about what's going on, and and really telling them, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I can provide for you. Um, I think if you have less than an hour, you don't have time to get through all that. Yeah, and if we have time, we also want to try and offer a little bit of treatment as well. We want to get them coming in and leaving feeling a little bit better if we can. And uh, from experience yeah. in the past, I've had uh, I've had some uh, evaluations depending on the, the body part where I have 45 minutes and sometimes 45 minutes to do two body parts. And it's, it's, it's impossible. No, and you end up cutting corners and yeah. you, you end up uh, not really having a clear diagnosis, a clear, and then if you don't have a clear diagnosis, you don't have a clear game plan. So that first visit absolutely should be an hour just to make sure that we get things going off well. Mm-hmm. Um, Another big thing is, will I see the same physiotherapist Mm -hmm. throughout my whole course of care? Because sometimes, you know, you want to go see that specialist physio. He's super busy. They do the assessment, and then you get pushed to (coughs) somebody else after the fact. Or there's such turnover somewhere where, you know, oh, today you're seeing Jim, and tomorrow you're seeing Joe, and next week you're going to see Ryan. Um, And and I think in terms of continuity of Mm -hmm. care... Uh, it's not necessarily there because you've developed, yeah. especially the first visit, you've developed that sort of rapport with the physiotherapist and then yeah. all of a sudden, oh, 
I go see somebody else. I gotta retell my story and, yeah, and when, when people are nervous sometimes when they come and so it's like you've now just spent an hour with the physio, you've kind of warmed up, you, you're more relaxed, and then you come for your next visit and then you're seeing somebody else, yeah. or it's like you're nervous all over again. Yes. Yeah. So it's like starting, yeah. I think it's like almost like starting from scratch. I was gonna say it's yeah. like dating. It's like dating. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I think absolutely for just in terms of continuity, for, for that connection, for that just having that, that rapport, I think it's super important that we see the same physio. You know, sometimes the physio is away on vacation or whatnot, but um, I think overall we want to make sure that we see the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, if, if somebody does go on vacation, usually the client will be notified yeah. ahead of time. Uh, this person is going to be taking over while I'm away. I've set them up with yeah. our game plan. and. We're good to go. We actually did that last week when I was away. Eric saw one of my clients, um, and uh, Eric has a little bit of a background in concussions, and she had some concussion stuff. So I said, "Hey, Eric, you take over that part." And she's actually really appreciative, and it really worked out well. So she's leaving Jay for Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the last big thing, um, especially that we're proud of in, in our center here, is will all the treatments be provided in private treatment rooms? So we pride ourselves on having um, private rooms so that, you know, that way a person feels comfortable, um, you know, privacy. They, 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 they might be able to, you know, provide more of their story as mm-hmm. well because, you know, the other option is being in a, in a big gym with curtains and you feel like you're in an emergency room and, yeah. and the neighbor next door can, can hear what's going on and, you know, it, or it, it, see what's going or on. See what's going see on. It, yeah. So it's, it ends up being a little bit awkward. And I think in terms of healing, we need to be um, as comfortable as possible. Yeah. So relax is a good word too. Um, so having that option for private treatment rooms is super, um, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some of the big questions that I think that uh, people should be asking when choosing a healthcare professional. I don't know if anybody wanted to sort well, of add anything to those that. Are, those are the big ones. If I have conversations uh, with people, you know, I, 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 I let them know it's, I understand if you don't necessarily want to come here, but you know, ask yeah. ask those questions. Make sure you're informed before uh, deciding where mm-hmm. where you want to go. Yes, it yeah. just it comes down to so many other types of decisions that we make in our life. You know, like for example, I know Dave is looking for daycare for his newborn baby. Yeah, you know, this isn't something that he's just gonna like. Ooh, I like the colors of the wall of this place. I'm going to go there. You know, there are certain... And when it comes to your own Mm well-being and your own pain, I I personally, this is my personal opinion, I feel that it's one of the decisions that we should make and be most informed of. For sure. Um, I mean, there are... Exactly. Mm -hmm. There are other things, you know, for your clothes, other things we can kind of take a different route, but... I don't know, it's my personal opinion. It's your health. When it comes to your own well being, yeah. it's it's better to to make sure that you're making the right decision. But yeah, I think it's like any service, like if you look at Absolutely. start looking at the trades, you know, you're yeah. looking for a carpenter, you're looking for some work in your house. You want you want somebody that, you know, that's certified, that has a good track record. Mm-hmm. And you want to see what they have to offer as well, if they have any specialties or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, so and who's going to be doing the work? So mm-hmm. and, and it's the same thing for any. So so at, at the end of the day, I think um, the consensus I think here is we shouldn't base ourselves on the price. We should Definitely. base ourselves on what is being offered for that price. And asking questions is super important because then you can really see, oh well, for this price I get this much mm-hmm. versus that price I get very little. So at the end of the day, we're looking for value and not necessarily so quality versus price. So any questions about some of the stuff that we talked about, please leave them in the comments. We will answer them. Um, Otherwise, thanks for watching. And uh, if there's any topics that you guys want us to cover as well. Any ideas? Yeah, any ideas, leave leave it in the comments section. Uh, It could be sit down. It could be something a little bit more practical as well. Um, You know, it could be Arifa. Riding her bike. Yeah. <laughs> With Eric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eric doing some, giving some badminton or ping pong so tips, funny. whatever it may be. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, 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 we're happy to cover it in one of our team huddles. So Ruth, Ruth isn't here today. Oh, what? I have a question. Yep. What if somebody's asking, are all physios qualified to do the same thing? So oh, good all, good physio, all physiotherapists have the same basic training. So when you graduate school and you, and you, and you, 
pass your national exam and get your license, we all have the same basic training. Some people go more into manual therapy, some people do some dry needling, some people get into concussion, some people do TMJ therapy, but that's usually further, further training that we end up doing. So at the end of the day, that's another good question to be asking, is if you need something specific like pelvic floor physio, then you want to call around and ask, does, does this person do pelvic floor physio? Mm -hmm. uh, do they do dry needling? Um, so we're, to answer the question, basically yes, but no. <laughs> so we, <laughs> yeah. we, 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 can, we can all get more, more of a, a specific training in certain things. So I hope that answered that question. Yep. Awesome. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We'd, we'd all you. have Ruth doing, uh, doing our little cheer at the end. Well, we can yeah. still do it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. Team Ruth. Okay. Bye, Flav. PT. PT. Woo! See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.